Hello again, it's Brian. Today I'm going to go over all the different buttons and functions and what does what on the Freightliner Cascadia. Not all of you new drivers will have the same exact truck as us, but a lot of the features, especially up here on the dash, are going to be the same. So I will go over everything that I know how to use and hopefully it helps you out when you're getting to your truck for the first time. Make sure you go over everything the best you can before you guys get on the road. Uh, it goes a long way to be comfortable so you can take those loads and, and get started making money. So let's get into it and I'll show you what I've learned. All right, so it's just some basics on the steering wheel. Got all your buttons here for up, down, left, and right. That's going to be how you get through your menus and the dash. And this is going to be your back button to return. Over here, this top light, when you press it, it will flash your headlights on and off. That's kind of like a known signal. If you're letting someone pass you and merge in front, you'll give them a quick flash of your headlights. This one's going to be a quick flash of your taillights. If you do have your phone hooked up and cruise control plus or minus and set and cancel, this is another menu button that will just go back to whatever last menu option you were um, in on the dash. Over here, uh, it's just some basics like windshield wiper sprayers, blinkers, and windshield wipers speed is gonna turn. Uh, and if you want to turn your brights on, just like a car, push it forward to stay on, pull it back just to flash your brights. Your headlights are going to be down here. You're going to turn them. And if you want your fog lights on, you're going to pull it. So pulling it is fog lights, fog lights off, and turning your headlights off. Over on this stick here, you're going to have your drive neutral and reverse. Of course, you do have to have your foot on the brake to engage drive or reverse. You can put it into manual mode by pressing that and you can go up gear or down gear. Oh, sorry, it's this way. Up gear or down gear by pulling it away from you or pushing it. And going up and down like this is your Jake brake or your exhaust brake. There's three different levels of your exhaust brake. There's Kind of low, medium, and high, or light, medium, and hard exhaust braking. If you do have your exhaust brake on, you'll see this little thing right here on the dash. That green light up light is your exhaust brake telling you it's on. Your cruise control is not going to work when your exhaust brake is activated, so make sure your exhaust brake is all the way off when you're wanting to use your cruise control. Your cruise control will automatically start using the exhaust brake when you're reaching five miles an hour over whatever your cruise control is set at. But if you need to add a stronger exhaust brake, you can, or if you like to use your Jake brake exhaust brake manually, you can use it that way as well. Up here is your pre-pass. Uh, this one's called the Best Pass. There's a few different names. They're basically all the same. Uh, this is, if you're not familiar with it, when you see those signs that say all trucks in the right lane, you're going to go through a scanner and it's going to scan this. And then you'll go through another one and it's going to register the truck if you need to pull into the way station or not. So if you're all clear and you don't need to pull into the way station and you just keep on driving you'll get a green light and it will stay flashing for about five minutes green and you'll hear a little bit of a beep noise if you need to pull in if they're pulling you into the way station for a quick way it's going to flash on this bottom one and it's going to be red it's going to be a louder audible noise and it's going to flash a lot faster all right, so these different buttons here, starting at the left, you've got the light test button. Light test is gonna run through all the different exterior lights. Uh, it's gonna turn your brights on and off, and it's going to turn your turn signals on and off for you. 
basically lets you run through your pre-trip and post-trip inspection uh, by yourself when it comes to lights. That's pretty awesome. Footwell lights is going to be a light down by your, your feet. The dome light is going to be the light over the top of you that turns on and off automatically when you get in and out of the doors. Uh, you can turn that on if you want. Hazards, of course. Utility light is going to be in your van body box, uh, inside your cargo box. And if you have a rear camera in your box, you'll need to have your utility light on to be able to see in your box. Because if I turn off utility light, it's going to cut power to that camera. So the utility light needs to be on to see in your box if it's wired up that way. That's how ours is at least. Uh, traction control. That's if you for some reason want to turn off traction control. I never have. I always leave ours on. Override engine shutdown is probably not going to do anything on your truck. Um, that's been deactivated on most all of the trucks. Over here you have HSA. HSA is going to always be on automatically. That's like your hill start assist. So if you're on a really steep hill, stop at a stoplight, you'll probably hear like a beeping noise because the brakes are holding automatically for you so you don't roll backwards. If for some reason you don't like that, you can turn it off, but I always leave ours on so we don't roll back on hills. Clearance lights is going to be your lights down the side of your cab, your side clearance lights, and it might also do your overhead visor lights on the front of your truck. On our truck, option two is the power to the lift gate. Your lift gate's not going to function if you don't turn the power on to it. And make sure that when you're done using your lift gate, you always remember to turn it off. If you're always leaving power running to your lift gate all the time, one, the battery is probably not going to last as long, and two, your lift gate might start to sag on its own. So always make sure it's just on when you're using the lift gate and off when you're done with it. Uh, this truck we're in and the truck before, option three was not hooked to anything. Uh, that would just be like an extra set of fog lights maybe or something. Um, but that's just going to be dormant and unused. Down here you have your axle locker. So these do have dual rear axles, but they are not always spinning. So essentially if you turn this locker on, it's an air locker. If you're like a Jeep kind of off-road person, you know what an air locker is. That's what we have on these trucks. And that's going to make both rear axles locked and spinning. So if you're on a really steep driveway or you are slipping around in the snow and you need more traction hooking up, you can lock your locker. I would highly recommend not locking your locker at speed. I would be doing that very slowly or stopped. So in the winter time, I have had to use this to get out of a few spots when I didn't want to put chains on. I just put my locker on and got on an off ramp or getting back on the road or a parking spot or something. Uh, another big, really important thing is this button. You're going to use this all the time. This is your rear suspension, your airbags. This lets the air out of your bags and my truck doesn't beep, but yours probably does. You're going to hear an alarm. It's letting you know that you don't have any air in your rear airbags. But when you're pulling up to docks, these straight trucks sit pretty high in the back. So you need to lower your bags so that you come level with the dock. So lower your airbags before your last couple of feet that you're pulling up to the dock leave them down while you're loading put your landing gear down especially if someone's coming in with a forklift when you're all done and loaded and you're going to pull away pull clear of the dock and put your suspension back up 
uh, and then you're good to go. Of course, don't forget to put your landing gear back up if you put that down. Last thing up here, um, fan speeds, pretty obvious, recirculate inside or outside air. And one thing I didn't know until I played with it more is there's two levels of air conditioning. There's of course off, the air conditioner is not doing anything. There's the green light, that's eco mode. It blows pretty decently cold. And then there's blue and that's the most cold. So if you have your rear air conditioning system on in your sleeper, uh, you're probably gonna wanna make sure the blue light's on. It's not gonna be as cold if it's turned to the green light. So keep an eye on that. These trucks are always in eco mode, so it goes into eco mode on the AC. And these are just like your car, of course, right here. All the different trucks have different gauges. This is just a manual gauge of my rear airbags and a manual backup gauge of my secondary air pressure running to my um, transmission. But mine is not hooked up, so it always sits at zero. All right, this is the control unit for your APU, your alternate power unit. Um, when you want to run your overhead air conditioning, charge your batteries, you're going to need to turn this on. APU on, APU off, button is right there. And our APU is off right now, it puts a little slash through it. And if it's monitoring your current battery percentage, it's going to be showing right there. Um, I'm not going to run through all the different settings on this, but if you don't see this little battery, then you want to look through your owner's manual and make sure you have your carrier unit set to monitor your batteries. That way your APU will start automatically if your batteries drop below like 40% charged. The heating and cooling buttons aren't going to do anything because our overhead units have their own thermostat. So these buttons are, aren't going to be relevant. Um, you're just basically turning your APU on and off and you're making sure that your APU controller is monitoring your battery percentage. Most of the trucks are going to have a block heater in them. A block heater you're going to want to use if it's super cold outside and you're parking. Uh, ours has a block heater in it. If I'm in, you know, 32 below somewhere and I'm parking for the night, I'm going to leave the block heater on. But you got to remember to turn that off when you're not using it. And there's going to be a switch for your water heater somewhere. Um, the water heater, I honestly never even use ours because the water is warm enough and we don't shower in our truck. But if you're needing hot water, there will be a switch somewhere for that. Every truck is going to have some button somewhere that says pump. The pump button is your water pump. So if you're using your sink, then you need to turn your pump on. Don't leave your pump on all the time. Uh, we always leave ours off when we're not using it. That way the pump lasts a lot longer. But if you're trying to use your faucet for your sink you got to turn your water pump on and of course if you are using your shower you got to turn your water pump on one of the things i really like about the ari sleeper is they give you this cool little monitor for your fresh water tank level uh, mine are full because i just filled them up fresh two is not going to show anything because i only have one 40 gallon tank but right now i have 40 gallons of fresh water on board and it'll also show me my battery and my batteries are full because I'm currently on shore power up on this controller right here is where it's going to show you your charging rate uh, because I'm fully charged right now it's flashing if it was not fully charged it's going to be solid and show you the charging rate uh, you can go through different settings in here and if you are plugging in at home to keep your batteries charged or your AC running, you can go into shore power and go through different menus to select um, different settings that you want when you're on shore power. There are some RV spots out there at Love's where you can plug in a power cord. Um, and that's kind of nice to not have to always be running your APU. 
again, I'm not going to go through all of everything with this because there should be an owner's manual in your truck for it. And last thing, this is going to be the thermostat. So like I said, the APU, it doesn't matter using, using those buttons, hot or cold or AC, because you're going to control it with your thermostat. Um, there's different settings, cool high, cool low, cool auto. Uh, typically, you're only going to want to use your overhead air conditioning. Typically, you're only going to want to use that overhead air conditioner when you're stopped. I have heard of people that run their APU while they're driving. I wouldn't recommend it. But um, like I said, typically you only use it while you're stopped. This is where you're going to set your thermostat and your different settings. If you have overhead fans in yours, this is going to be the controller for your vent fan. Our uh, vent fan is just in the bathroom area, but um, this is where you control the, the fan speed and opening and closing the lid for it. And lastly, if you're in the ARI sleeper or the AA sleeper, you're going to have some type of twin air or rear air controller. This is called a slave system to your uh, AC compressor running off of the engine. Uh, this is only going to blow cold air if your engine is running, your actual truck's engine. This is where you're going to get AC to be blowing back in the sleeper for whoever's sleeping while the other person's driving. Uh, ours works like this by simply pressing hot or cold and adjusting how much fan speed you want and then setting whatever temperature you want. The AA sleeper is very similar to this. It doesn't look the same, but the features work the same. So this is what you're gonna wanna run while you're driving. Don't be running your APU all the time while you're on the road. Be using this. All right, so hopefully that helped you out. Uh, I don't think I know everything about these trucks, but I do know a lot. Uh, this is the second truck that we've had here with exam. The first truck we had was the AA sleeper. If you're in a truck with an AA sleeper and you have questions about it, don't be afraid to ask exam to reach out to me, uh, for you to reach out to me and I can hopefully answer any questions you have about an AA sleeper or an ARI sleeper like this one. Um, your dash function should be pretty much the same, being that, as far as I know, all exam has our Cascadias. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.